when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad described heaven, he said, money, good homes, friendship, and all walks of life. The first thing some of our folks who have been so tied up in spookism and that heaven in the sky, he's just so materialistic. What else can you be since we are material? <laughs> Why should I be anti-materialistic when I'm material? That means I'm anti-me. I got to be pro-material to be pro-myself. When you were strong in the church and believing that you were going to die and go somewhere, how did they describe heaven? As something spiritual? Something like the Buddhists do? Nirvana is nothing but a feeling and your soul be floating out into nothing? They didn't teach you that, did they? They told you you would have a long, flowing, white robe, didn't they? They talked about some good-looking rags, didn't they? What? Right? Better than Calvin Klein and all them faggots, okay? That's how they described heaven to you. Gold, oh, them golden slippers, oh, them golden slippers, ain't that right? They weren't talking about no spooks. Spooks ain't got no feet. Spooks can't wear no shoes. They ain't got no shoulders to hold no robes. They said the streets were paved with gold. Talking about bread, baby. Gold ain't no good to a spirit. Spirit can't buy nothing. They talking about good food, milk and honey. Ah. Hey, you a spook, you don't need nothing to eat, no. They're talking about good eating. Delicacies. Milk and honey are delicacies. Okay? I mean, you eating the best, wearing the best, walking in the best, and walking on the best. And when you get tired of walking, what you say? I'm going to put on my wings, I'm going to fly all over God's heaven. I mean, you had every means of transportation. That was heaven. What's wrong? Then when the honorable Elijah Muhammad breaks down and says, you don't need to go up there to get because it ain't up there. Clouds too heavy to stand on clouds. Okay? <laughs> Bees can't fly that high to make no honey. Okay? <laughs> Everything that they describe comes from the earth. Gold is in the earth. Yes, They're trying to tell you right then, man, hey, you want heaven? Get it from the earth. Go down there and get you some gold. Grow you some flour and raise you some bees. Get, eat you some honey. Go out in the field and graze you some cattle and milk them. Drink you some milk. Grow you some wheat. Make you some bread. I mean, whatever you want, you standing on it. They're telling you that even in spookism, but it was a code. For those that were going to be spooked up, take it spooky, and those who understood, take it for real. That's why the folks who print, all the folks who print, a no publisher who ever printed Bibles looked for his heaven after he died. All of the publishers were trying to get theirs while they were here. Okay? The cats who own the bookstores that sell them to you. Go see where they're living and see what they're driving and see what they eat for dinner. <laughs> Don't check what they wear in the store because that's their game. They play that. Yeah. Check what they wear when they go out. Okay? That's heaven. All right. So all of that. Love, peace, and happiness. You can't have that broke. You can't make me happy when I'm broke. I might smile and go along with it, baby, but I ain't happy. <laughs> ain't no peace in my heart. I may not be mad at you, but I'm mad at somebody. Because I'm broke. I don't feel good. I am troubled. I ain't at no peace. You can't give me no peace. Broke and hungry. Bills due. Wife mad. No, that, that ain't no peace. That's the reality of it. As Mr. Farrakhan has said, how you gonna teach a man something with his stomach growling? He can't hear you for his stomach. Stomach growling louder you can talk. Jesus knew that. Jesus up there teaching, he saw them cats getting hungry. What'd he say? Hey, let me stop teaching and start feeding these dudes. 
there ain't nothing else I say ain't going to touch them. They sitting there thinking about some grub. So I might well cut this lecture off and deal out the fish and the bread, because that's what they're looking for. And once they get set on that, I can teach them about the kingdom from now on, and the only kingdom they want to see is that bakery and that fish net. They want some grub. All right? So I'm saying that all of this is together. Hey, friendship in all walks of life. He just choose, well, I'll be friends with these over here and I won't be friends with those. You need to study the word friend and the word friendship. Yeah. Okay? It doesn't mean somebody that you have undying and unceasing love for and all of that. We're not going to get into it today. You look it up. You study it and see what it means. The friends are facilitators. Friends enable you to walk through paths that you otherwise would not even know. Friends can open doors for you that you don't have the key to yourself. Okay? Friendship in all walks of life. Why in all walks of life? So you can walk anywhere in life and know that if you run into an obstacle, there's somebody there that will see you through. You develop those. Many of us made a mistake. The minute we heard Islam, came to the name, we wanted to, hey, look here, insult everybody. <laughs> Get on the bus, got a white bus driver. Hey, you ain't drive this thing, don't make me fall down. Say, hey, wait a minute, man. Catch the seat, sit out, and forget that cat. Smile at it. Keep on. One day you may be in a desperate situation. Got to get where you're going and just lost all your money. Ain't got no bus fare and can appeal to that cat. And for some reason, he may let you on. In fact, it's a brother who, who likes to give a, a brother who uh, years ago was our orientation teacher, one of our lieutenants. You've heard me talk about him many times, Brother Nuri, who used to teach in the orientation class. To be very careful how you treat everybody. And the example that he gave was, Suppose you're driving down the street and here's some old cracker just messing up and you rolling down the window and cussing him and blowing your horn and get out of the way, you old white faggot, you, you dog, and all that. Okay. And he goes to his job, goes back, takes off his jacket, puts on his black robe. <laughs> And go sit up on the bench. It don't have to be you. Some other black person just ran a stoplight. And they come walking into the courtroom. Judges are people. They're, that's why you hear a judge here in two different cases on two different days that are just alike and deal with them two different ways. Depending on how he feel. Whether his breakfast was good, whether his coffee was hot enough. Understand? Now here a nigga just and call him everything but a child of God, and he got that on his mind, and he walk in the courtroom, and first thing, and here come a nigga, give him everything you can give him. Yes, Understand? Yes, then on the other hand, you drive down the street. It's the same example he's giving. You drive down the street, and you're not in no particular hurry, but you see a white woman over there with a flat tire. Nobody around to help her. You pull your car over to the side, brother, and you get out. Miss, you got a problem. May I help you? You got a spare? Yes, I have. Okay. And you change the tire. And you go on about your business. And she go home. And her daddy, the judge, is there. And she said, Daddy, I met the nicest nigga today. <laughs> oh, yeah, she, she, she might say it like that. But she said, I was out there stranded and nobody else said, all, all our folks were just passing by me soon. Say, and this colored boy pulled over and changed my tie for me. Now, when he go in the courtroom and a black man come up before him, his mind is different. Right. Not because he loves you, but because of some other experience that triggers his reaction to a black person. See what we talking about? Yes, sir. He talking about loving white folks. <laughs> to my loving black folks and trying to make this world that we got to go through easier to get through. Yes, Consider that. Now, you may never see them again, but consider your brother and your sister. 
who may have, you don't know what connection this particular devil has with some other black person. You may be, you may be able to make life hard or easy for other black people, and you don't even know it because you don't know what the hell you're doing. All you see is a devil. That a dirty old Caucasian, stinking, stale face, weak bone Caucasian. <laughs> And you say that in your mind as you smile and say, how are you, sir? <laughs>